Okay, so you know you know I must love y'all when I have three cameras running to make this video, but we have all this here, all these trinkets and doodads on the table because I get a lot of questions about my Sony FX3 setup. So I'm here to do this video to give you the full breakdown of you know how I make this Sony FX3 really work because I've adjusted to using the Sony FX6 the way it's physically designed. So I wanted to make my, you know, my FX3 kind of feel the same way when I need a smaller camera. Every single thing on this table i'm gonna make sure to put down in the description below so you can have those links to get exactly what you need but let's let's get there let's do this let me show you my rig first off of course the brains of the operation is going to be the sony fx3 it's a camera that all of you know about it's a camera that so many people love it's the first camera that i really used that made me switch to sony completely in the video aspect as you can see i already have the mc11 adapter on there and the reason why is because for me i'm i'm, I'm a cheap guy okay a lot of you have these sony g master lenses me i have all these ef lenses that i've had for my canon system and I, i'm just gonna I'm, I'm 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 bougie sometimes not when it comes to buying a bunch of lenses so i still use lenses like my sigma 24 to 70 art and my sigma 35 millimeter so it, it kind of made sense to get the mc11 because i still get full autofocus with those lenses next up we have this small rig cage this is actually the full cage you can get the half cage that is you know it's not surrounded the camera like this one but this is the one I prefer to use because I like to you know have as many areas I can mount things on on my cage so it's pretty simple all you have to do is slide it on like you will any other cage and once you do that what's cool about the new small rig products is they come with these ear tools that are magnetically attached at the bottom of each cage and once you're done attaching that cage to the camera body all you have to do is slide that little magnetic piece back in there and you're good to go what you also notice is I have all these little, little, you know, I got a NATO rail right here. I have this quick release clamp. I'm going to break down later why I have these pieces on here because it, it actually matters. So the next piece I'm going to grab here is going to be this base plate from Small Rig. This is actually the base plate that comes with the Sony FX6 kit from Small Rig that they actually sent me. So shout out to Small Rig for sending that over. But I love this so much that I got another one for my FX3. And here's the other piece that comes from that Small Rig setup. Uh, this is actually the plate that you would use for something like a shoulder rig like a shoulder mount so from there all you have to do is pretty easy line it up once you line it up all you have to do is slide it right through you hear that snap on and what's cool is it is pretty easy to just tighten on once you do that mm, tighten it on it's there you can see it's very secure now obviously there's a tripod plate that needs to go here and small rig of course sends you one but this is not what one we're going to use today. So I'm going to just go ahead and slide this over here because we're not going to need it. The one we're going to use today, this is going to be where my rig is going to be different from a lot of people, is that I love to use this here plate from Falcam. This is the Falcam DJI RS3 plate. And the reason why I love to use this is because it makes it easy to work on my quick release system. I'm going to show you that really quickly. What I love about this Falcam system is all I have to do is press this button and boom, that quick release plate will slide right out. Other thing is this is Arca Swiss. So of course you can use anything from Falcam when it comes to their quick release system, but you can also use the conventional Arca Swiss to tighten it down. But next step is I actually have to put this on the small rig cage. Once it's on there, I have an easy setup. All I have to do is take my camera body and just slide it right on and boom. And it's very easy to slide right off. And again, this plate is indeed Arca Swiss. Uh, you can use it with other systems that ain't the file cam system. So uh, I would also recommend that you get the plate that has the two screws that you can put in. That way you can have a really, really secure, you know, connection to your camera. Because we ain't trying to, you know, drop the camera at any given moment so we want to make sure our rig is actually safe and functional and of course the next thing you have are your 15 millimeter rods you've seen these before of course they are from small rig you've seen them you've got them i'm pretty sure you all have a, a set of these laying around somewhere in your camera kit they're going to be longer the reason why i like to have them longer i, I may want to attach other things to this rig you know a v mount battery plate maybe a follow focus just various things like that oh and the reason why i have this quick release plate on the side is that whenever I want to shoot vertical video at any given time with the file cam system, I can just turn it vertically. And this NATO rail is here just in case I want to slide a top handle on there. And now I have a vertical setup. And now we're going to go back horizontal because, you know, apparently that is the way video was meant to be shot. Next step is we have this side handle. This side handle is another NATO rail accessory. I love to use that. The other thing I did with this is I made sure to flip this. 
The reason why I flipped this is because when you have all these cables, all right, back here, you have your HDMI, your microphone cable, just things you're gonna need. Uh, it's kind of hard to twist this on and tighten this down. So I actually flipped this around so that I can easily, okay, install this, boom, and instead I can tighten this from the front. I have easy access to it. So you wanna make it easy. Again, you see I like things just slipping around and just being able to just slide everywhere. And that sounds disgusting, but it makes things very convenient when you have things like these quick release plates and a NATO rail like you can just put things on a top handle it makes your life a little bit easier for me I'm an old man I can get very impatient sometimes so all this screwing on things I love to use NATO rail slide things on makes life easier so from there, we're gonna put on the lens. And of course, I've told you my favorite lens to use in this type of setup is going to be the 24 to 70 by Sigma, the art system. And I really, really love this lens. Only thing I don't like about it is it is really, really heavy. It is a big lens. And because it's a big lens, I always love to use a lens supporter. You don't need this, but you never know. Let me move this out of the way real quick. Let me show you something. You never know, okay? <sighs> You never know when you're using a lens this side. I still haven't reviewed this, but this is the DZO Cata Zoom. Okay, this is the 35 to 80 millimeter T 2.9. All right, I have been loving this lens. I want to keep shooting some more videos on this before I show you. But again, like something this heavy, you may want a lens supporter. And what I try to do with my lens supporter is either support it, you know, at the base of the lens or right at the front, right between where the front of the lens is and where my zoom ring is. So that way I still have my focus, I still have my zoom, everything is still easy to access and that lens support is not getting in the way. All right, next step is going to be powering this here setup. So I like to use this here V-mount base plate and the reason why it's really small is really fitting that, that profile because this is a cinema rig, but it doesn't have to be gigantic. So I wanna make sure that I have a V-mount plate from small rig that actually match. All right, hold on, give me a second. This here Moman V-mount battery. This is a 140 watt battery. Shout out to Moman for sending this over. I'm actually gonna do a review and a couple of short form videos to show you all why having a v-mount battery is important and again with this v-mount plate i wanted to make sure the profile really matched so when i slide that on you can see that it's really seamless it's got a good look because i know a lot of you feel the same way you know your cinema rig has to be functional but you know we kind of like it to look good too so it fits seamlessly what i always do is pull that screen out so that i can actually put this be my battery as close up to my body as I can just so I can keep everything you know centered and uh, you know good good you know good balance in your cinema rig is, is very necessary so then I'm just gonna put that screen right there to the side so there you go so now we have a way to not only power the camera but we have to also power our monitor what I also love about this V-mount, okay, so I have version one. I'm gonna show you all the comparison between the two in the later video, but this thing not only has DTAP, but it has, you know, USB-A, but it has USB-C. It's like you, you just merged, you know, time. We got the 2010s merged with 2023, and there's so many V-mount batteries that don't have USB-C, but we have so many cameras now that are powered USB-C. So it's really, really clutch when I can use something, you know, like, I. You know, it's 2023, but we still got devices that don't have USB-C as their main power source. You know, shout out to uh, Apple and the iPhone uh, for their lightning cable. So I'm able to put that USB-C not only in my camera, but I'm able to now put that in my V-mount battery. So I have a full USB-C setup here, and, and, and it's a modern setup that was meant to be, you know, in the year 2023. But again, if you're using something like a dummy battery, it is very clutch, all right, to have, you know, the DTAP. You can also use other types of like, you know, pinned, you know, power sources for your monitors and they will also more than likely be DTAP at the end, but it's very clutch. You can do that and then you can connect that dummy battery, of course, to, boom, your monitor and power it. So the monitor of choice, let me give you some history. I usually use the Atomos Ninja 5. The Atomos Ninja 5 was the go-to. The price was good, it was very good. The quality was nice, the screen was nice. It was touch screen, it's a very modern device. Anytime I used it, it, it would overheat the fan. Like, I don't know what it was about, you know, it managing heat well. It did not manage heat very well at all. So the fans would literally just not really work well. And I would have it overheat to the point where there was a side of the screen that would be completely black so it wasn't really functional it would always happen in like maybe three hours four hours if I'm using the camera for like an all-day shoot 
So I'd already tried the port keys monitor that worked with the Z-Cam, you know, E2S6 and some of the Blackmagic cameras that you can control the camera on the monitor. So I knew about port keys. So I went with this one. I, I saw a bunch of reviews on it. This is the port keys LH5P version two. I would tell you everything you're looking for, this thing has it, whether it be, you know, making sure you have your rule of thirds, your false color. You know, it already has some Sony s 3 LUTs loaded in there, preloaded in there when you buy the thing, okay? Uh, it's everything you're looking for comes in this here monitor okay so if you're ever looking for a monitor five inch monitor that's a good price touch screen very functional i would highly recommend it now i'm gonna throw you off okay this is where my rig is probably gonna be a little different than yours instead of putting it here at the top or even using that top handle which we're gonna get to I'm actually gonna put it on the side and the reason why is like i said i want this thing to emulate what i've really come accustomed to using when it comes to the fx6 with the fx6 usually that monitor is going to be mounted to the left side of the camera so guess what when i'm doing this rig i like to have this big monitor mounted to the left side of the camera because i want to i want to show you how i hold my camera usually when i'm holding my camera it's going to be here i don't typically hold it here i like to hold it here kind of rest it to the side and guess what as soon as i rest to the side I look down boom monitor so it makes it a little easier for me i'm not saying that that works for everybody but for me that has been extremely useful and it has made my workflow a lot better and it feels way more comfortable in my hand for the way that i shoot the next thing i'm going to install is going to be of course the top handle okay so remember remember that this top handle apparently was originally designed for toddlers to hold it in their hand because small rig had to make an extension to make sure that us adults could hold this top handle because in, it, in, its, in its native form it just wasn't functional it wasn't fun or, or comfortable to hold on to so the small rig you know attachment the extension comes in clutch i also put a cold shoe at the top just in case you know if i have a moment where i want to put a monitor here i installed a cold shoe also from small rig at the top of this thing so makes it very versatile for wherever i want to put that monitor my microphone of choice is the sennheiser mke 600 i've tried a lot of like the other ones like the rode ntg2 the rode ntg4 plus I i've tried many rode shotgun mics and they are they were very good it's just that I needed a mic that gave me a more of a beefier sound and this mic here has really really good clean low end i know for for a lot of you audio people you know what i'm saying for you videography people you may know sometimes if, if you really analyze audio and you like to mix your audio have control over it this thing gives you really 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 good clean and uh, beefy low end uh, that really makes a voice come out when you especially when you're using this for like corporate videos interviews like it is perfect you can actually hear the bass in a person's voice and of course, if you know anything about the FX3, you got to make sure that you get one of those microphone spacers for the top handle. And that's because apparently Sony, Sony only designed this top handle to work on Sony shotgun mics. This microphone cable is uh, one of my favorites to use for a setup like this because it's not too long. It's long enough for the work. So I'll make sure to put that in the description below too. And of course, no cinema rig is complete without a matte box. All right. This is the mini mat again from small rig. It is mini many but you can still fit full size you know filters through it so i love to use this thing because it keeps that compact look this full it, it fits the aesthetic of this rig again i know it sounds crazy but the aesthetics of your cinema rig apparently matters to all of us so you want to make sure it looks good fits good you know it's on it's on its Dion sanders all right you got to look good feel good you play good so i'd imagine it shoots better when it looks better i, I don't I, your footage will look 10 times better if your rig looks 10 times better trust me on that it's proven but there you go this is my fx3 cinema rig as you can see it may be a little bit different from some of you but you'll see some similarities across the board as far as all of us because we kind of you know use the same thing we kind of need the same things when it comes to like audio and powering our cameras but as you can see you know the big difference is probably going to be how i put you know a railing system on the side and sometimes on the top and then i have the quick release plate and then the plate that i'm using from file cam the, the the quick release system so i have some differences and of course you know me monitoring myself on the side instead of you know in front of me top handle style but i like this it's very balanced very well balanced rig really really love it um very compact but at the same time beefy all right so 
Hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully you got something out of this video. I hope that you've gotten some inspiration for your next cinema rig. Uh, I hope that, you know, some of these pointers have been, you know, valuable to you. So hit that description below if you seen anything in this video that has, you know, piqued your interest and have gotten you, you know, highly stimulated on the cinematic front. Either way, please like, comment, subscribe to your boy, and I hope to see you all in the next video where we talk more about the Sony FX6 and the Sony FX3, how we rig it out, but also how we use it on the job. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. I love you.